Hey everybody, welcome back to Carbon's DIY Garage. Sorry for the noise in the background. We're still uh, digging ourselves out from a winter freeze here in Texas and getting power and everything set up. But I uh, wanted to give you a video of replacing the exhaust manifold on my Jeep TJ. The TDSR, that doesn't sound right. Definitely needed that work done. I didn't know how long that video was gonna last. Uh, it turned out it was about an hour long, so I've broken it up into two parts. My plan with making this video was to uh, really try to go step by step a bit for people who wanted a little bit more detail on how it gets done, how it's supposed to get done, lessons learned along the way. So I'm sorry in advance if it's uh, too long, but hopefully this will help a few people out. Hey everyone, welcome to TDSR Surgery Day. Uh, I'm going to tackle a project that for me is a bit intimidating and I've been putting off for a little while because... Um, I just wasn't confident that I'd be able to do it, but I've been doing a lot of research online, trying to learn, and uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and tackle it today, and that is the exhaust leak on this Jeep. Um, as I saw in a previous video, the uh, exhaust uh, manifold gasket is for sure leaking. I don't know if the manifold itself is leaking or not, but I'm gonna replace both the gasket and the manifold uh, because I really don't wanna have to do this project again. So I'm gonna take you on that journey. This. Uh, project is known to take quite a while, so I don't know how long this video is going to end up doing, but the approach I'm going to take with this video is I'm going to do it in a way that kind of mimics what we do uh, in my uh, day job over at the International Space Station where we have the manufacturer's procedure as a reference uh, and we methodically work through the steps. So I thought I'd just go step by step um, in this video and that way I'll break it up in the description so you can skip to various steps. Uh, it might help you if you're running into a specific problem not that I know how to do it right, but at least you can see how I tackled that particular issue. Um, I've also done in my research all the things that could maybe go wrong, including uh, broken bolts or stuck bolts or um, things of that nature. So I've tried to do research on how to accomplish those tasks and uh, don't tell my wife, but uh, I've also bought some parts that uh, could help me in some of those contingency cases um, not sure if I'm going to need them or not, but it's better to have them than not. So I've got uh, the tools I need to extract bolts if they snap. Um, got what I need in order to clean the head. Um, got a torch if I need that to help get some bolts out. Um, so hopefully we're all set. Uh, here's the parts that I'm going to be installing today. The new manifold, uh, enough of the reviews and research has said that the heat shield on the TJs uh, gets in the way more than anything else. So I'm going to take the heat shield right off to start with. Um, I went ahead and bought a separate manifold gasket from Felpro since the gasket that comes with the manifold looks pretty weak and has some creases in it. And reviews on that gasket were not all the best. Um, so I, And then I also bought this uh, Dorman uh, bolt set. So I'm gonna replace all the manifold bolts with new bolts. And I'm gonna put a link in the description for all the parts that I'm using today to, uh, again, to try to help you out. So like I said, I'm going to be using the procedure out of the service manual as a guide. And then, of course, a lot of the YouTube uh, real lessons that people have had as they've gone through this on uh, TJs and YJs. And we'll see how it progresses. Um, I'm shooting this video before I even start because uh, I want to see how it actually turns out versus what I think it'll turn out as. And I think it'll be more fun for you guys to see. Uh, the naive predictions and then the uh, reality at the end. Hopefully it goes well, um, but uh, time will tell. I'm I'm skeptical, but hopeful. How's that? So we'll uh, let's go ahead and get into it and see how it goes. All right. So step zero really is to do some recon and also get out your PB blaster. And for the last five or so days, I've been hitting everything I can with PB blaster. And I want to, sh I guess I really can't get to show you the bolts in the back, but there's two bolts. There's a bolt back here, and then there's a nut down at the bottom on the exhaust manifold. Make sure you hit both of those with the uh, uh, PB blaster. And for me, both of the nut and the bolt are still there. And then you've got the bolt down here, the bolt over here. Both of those are still there. Uh, there's supposed to be a bolt here, and it's missing, and I've stuck... Um, a little straw in the hole and it goes back pretty far so I don't think the bolt is snapped off inside which would be great but um, I think it's just missing and 
Anyway, can't really show it to you, but uh, you can also see that there's a lot of gasket missing up here at the top. So uh, again, obviously a leak here going on, but then there's a bolt here and a nut down here. But you also want to hit everything else you're going to be touching. So I don't know the last time the belt's been removed on this uh, Jeep, so hitting the tensioner bolt, the steering pump bolts, uh, the bolts here, the bolts and nuts for the uh, bracket and the throttle body. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold fuel lines on the bottom of the intake manifold that uh, you should hit from the bottom. And you're also going to be removing the nuts on the exhaust connection to the bottom of the manifold. So make sure you hit those as well. Those uh, shouldn't be so critical because uh, the manifold comes with new nuts and the washers to reconnect the exhaust so if i end up snapping the bolt on the exhaust manifold that's not a big deal try to avoid it if we can but anyway that's uh, the lay of the land so we're gonna go ahead and get started step one disconnect the battery negative cable so the next step is to remove everything off of the intake manifold which is really bad but if you jump over to the procedure for removing the intake manifold it actually gives you more steps on what you need to do. So the first step is to remove the air inlet hose from the throttle body and the air cleaner. And you can see that I've already done that and uh, the blue towel is there. So next is to loosen the accessory drive belt tension and remove the belt from the power steering pump. And then the step after that is to remove the power steering pump and brackets from the water pump and intake manifold and support the steering pump with brackets so that uh, uh, support the steering pump with uh, wire or zip ties or something so it doesn't fall down. These are half inch bolts and you can just spin the steering pump pulley to uh, get access to each of the bolt heads. One of my biggest fears is snapping any of these old bolts. Um, so I'm taking my time and Loosen it just a little bit, tighten it back up, loosen it a little bit, tighten it back up until it moves freely. There's a third bolt on the side of the steering pump that I didn't realize. So I'm letting that soak with PB Blaster. And I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is to remove, relieve pressure in the fuel system. So the next step is to remove the fuel filler cap to relieve fuel tank pressure, put the cap back on, and then disconnect the fuel supply and return tube from the fuel rail according to a different procedure in the manual. So here's a great first got you with following the manufacturer's directions, which is super frustrating. So the first thing they had you do is disconnect the negative battery cable. And then they had you take the drive belt off and remove the steering pump. And then they have you pull the fuse for the fuel pump. And then they tell you to run the engine to relieve the pressure in the fuel system. Well, you can't run the engine with the negative battery terminal disconnected and with the drive belt. You know, I don't want to start the engine with the steering pump disconnected and drive belt not attached it doesn't make sense so a couple options one is to relieve pressure a different way and another option is to put it back together and do it the way the manufacturer says um, i'm not really keen on pulling injectors out and things like that so i'm going to take the hit and uh, put the pump back on and the belt back on and start it up okay fuel pump relay is removed and the belt's back on and the battery's reconnected so let's see what happens Okay, 
no fuel pressure, so I think we're in good shape to try again. We'll start with the negative battery terminal, take the pump off, and move forward. Heads up on that, it's a good lesson to learn. Relieve the fuel pressure first before you start anything else. Okay, just so you know, there are three bolts for the steering pump. Two are easily obvious at the top, but there's one on the side as well. Um, say at the seven o'clock position, if you're looking towards the from the front to the back of the Jeep. So there's three bolts there. It'll drop down out of this bracket, and then you just need to pull it aside and then uh, zip tie it out of the way so that it doesn't hang on the hoses. Um, and then next we'll start with taking other stuff off of the intake manifold. So to remove the fuel line, you, it's a quick disconnect, so you remove this metal clip to keep the, let the two parts come apart, and then you use a, um, like what you use on a fuel filter, it's a fuel line, a quick disconnect tool, I guess. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the one that I have. Um, you just uh, push it up um, into the quick disconnect, and it opens up the two tabs that are inside this connector. And then you, at the same time, you're pulling back on the fuel line. And like you saw, it comes apart. And uh, there's some fuel in the line still. So just be aware of that. And uh, yeah, it came apart pretty, pretty easy. Next is to do step eight to disconnect the accelerator cable from the throttle body and the hold down bracket. This is a 10 millimeter, three, two bolts and a nut. Step nine is to disconnect the electrical connectors and pull the harness, harnesses away from the manifold. The throttle position sensor, the idle speed control motor, the coolant temperature sensor at the thermostat, the manifold air temperature sensor at the intake manifold, the fuel injectors, and the oxygen sensor. Just uh, talk about electrical connectors real quick. Um, so I've disconnected the first one, which is uh, the electrical connector to the steering pump. And uh, so just some general advice first um, from other videos, we're gonna end up with a lot of loose cables. Um, so label them as you go to really help you put it back together uh, easy, more easily. Secondly, um, you wanna be really careful with disconnecting your connector, especially on these old vehicles. Uh, trust me, after dealing with my 2010 Cobalt and electrical problems because of broken wiring, take your time with the connectors and then also inspect inside the connectors, make sure the all the ceiling parts are where they go and every, there's not a big piece of debris in there or anything like that. So check for FOD as you go along and it'll save you in the long run.
injector A is at the front. argue I don't have to label injector D since it's the last one, but in case the labels come off. I got all the connectors disconnected. Um, there was one that was zip tied to the throttle cable. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Um, and then I got the, so there's the, the harness con protector, I guess, on the valve cover. So you just lift that up and then I just folded the whole thing over here. I had to disconnect the vacuum line to the valve cover and the vacuum line to the intake manifold in order to just be able to clear all of the wire harnesses. But I uh, got everything labeled, disconnected, and now it's set aside. So the next steps are to take care of the vacuum lines. Um, I've got the crankcase ventilation uh, hose already just swiveled out of the way. I'm not going to disconnect it. Um, the vacuum line that runs to the valve cover is disconnected. Um, and then there's a couple more vacuum lines underneath the, uh, the air intake that uh, you need to remove as well. So this one is uh, towards the front. And then there's one from your brake booster that uh, just, and both of these just uh, gently pull off and uh, just let them hang, I guess. Just gotta remove them back together. The next step is to actually remove the intake manifold. So you remove bolts two through five and then uh, loosen bolts six and uh, nuts, six and seven, and then the manifold should uh, come right off. Ha -ha. Um, so you need to know the numbering of the bolts. So one is at top, two and three are on the sides, four and five and six and seven. Order will be important, especially later, but for now, you just remove all the bolts and then loosen the nuts. And that way the nuts and the center bolt, if, if you, so you leave the center bolt, uh, if you have one, cause that'll keep the exhaust manifold in place, but don't take the nuts off on the side because that's uh, just uh, gonna let the exhaust manifold drop. So just the, uh, four bolts that are holding on the intake panel.
there are two 10 millimeter fasteners I forgot about at the bottom of the intake manifold that holds the fuel line to the manifold. So you have to remove those as well. It's probably covered in the generic instruction of remove everything. Um, I'm gonna go do that and then I'll, when I get the manifold out, I'll show you where they are. It's easier. Okay, the two bolts down there are 5 16th uh, size and um, they're, one of them is pretty easy to access. The other one is right above the engine mount, uh, but you can get up there with a, a smaller ratchet. And if you're really lucky, then um, when you get that one out, it'll drop and uh, go right on your mouth. So look out for that. Um, anyway, get the bolt out of here and um, get the manifold out. The next step in this madness is to uh, release the nuts holding the exhaust pipe to the exhaust manifold. There's just two of them. Um, it's really hard to get a good shot for a video of doing this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go at it and then let you know how it goes. One of the bolts, uh, this upper one, uh, looks like it's a pretty straight shot with a tool, um, but I think a universal joint is gonna be needed. Um, at least on one of these. Hopefully they come loose. I've been PB blasting for a week, um, but we'll just see what happens. And uh, if they do break or snap, then uh, the new manifold comes with uh, bolts and nuts, so uh, it should be okay. And obviously be careful not to damage the oxygen sensor on the exhaust pipe. So I was able to get both of the nuts off um, without having to break anything or strip anything. That technique of uh, loosening them just a tiny bit, tightening them up, loosening, tightening, um, worked out really well again. Uh, these are torqued down really hard, so you gotta put a lot of uh, oomph into it to break them free. And I guess people use impact on this, and uh, that of course will probably take it right off, but I didn't, didn't want to do that. I wanted to try to get it off without breaking anything, and I thought this was the easiest way to do that. With the exhaust disconnected at the bottom, the next step is to remove the center bolt, if you have one, which I don't, the two outboard nuts, and then just remove the exhaust manifold. Uh, also looking at it now, um, some people, when they take the intake manifold off, the dowel, the two dowel pins that are in the block come out with the intake manifold, and some people can get it put back in, some people have to remove the dowels and drive them back into the block, Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. For my application, the both of the dowels are still in the block, so that's one less thing for me to worry about. So now I'm gonna use my 9 16ths and get the exhaust manifold off. So on the firewall side, the nut didn't come off. It took the whole uh, bolt, the threaded bolt, uh, out of the block, which is fine because I'm going to replace it all anyway. Here's the gasket. <laughs> it's just insane. And um, I'll swing the camera around and show you, but there's actually a old wasp's nest down here. It's just, just crazy. TDSR is nothing if not surprises. So let me show you the block. Uh, I just took the exhaust manifold off, so I haven't cleaned or touched anything yet. Um, so we'll, let's see, just from the top down first, the, uh, the wasp's nest, that's, uh, that's fun, so we'll clean that out. Um, 
you can see, you know, there's a, it's really messy. Um, some of that's just PB Blaster, and some of that is, uh, you know, honestly not really sure what all the source is. But uh, that's okay. We're going to clean it up. We're going to make it look really nice. Um, you can see, let's see, we can do an inspection inside. Um, you can see, well, there's no animals in here, so that's good. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's got 204,000 miles on it, but uh, all things considered, um, I think taking everything apart was pretty, pretty okay, and um, we'll get it cleaned up. So we'll take a look at uh, the other hardware. So this is the intake manifold that's going to go back in. Um, most important is the face of it. And I don't see any big pitting or anything like that. So I think uh, putting it back in should be fine. Uh, I'll show you the bottom. I mentioned there's two fasteners at the bottom to hold the fuel rail to the bottom of the manifold. Those are quarter inch uh, fasteners, uh, but that's what I was talking about. Going over to the exhaust manifold. Other than, I mean, it hasn't really had to do much work because uh, all the exhaust was just coming out the sides. Um, but other than being really rusty and old, um, it really seems to be in pretty good shape. I don't see any cracks uh, or anything like that. So, but then here's the gasket. And, you know, some of these videos, people show um, their gasket and like, oh, look, you can see a little bit of leak and blow by. Um, Clearly, this gasket is shot, uh, so hopefully it'll bring TDSR back to life a little bit when we get this all replaced. So that's the end of uh, part one of this two-part series on replacing the exhaust manifold and gasket. Uh, as you could tell, it was uh, pretty much something that needed to be done, so I'm glad that uh, work is being completed. But um, I don't want to leave a cliffhanger for you, but that's what's going to happen. So if you like the video, please uh, go take a look at part two that walks through the process of installing the gasket, installing the new exhaust manifold, and making sure that it all fits. There's lots of lessons learned involved in that process, so be, uh, be sure to go check it out. And of course, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the new videos that are coming.